Assalamu alaikum. Zakumullah khair for coming. If you can ask you to have please your seats. If you have young kids, you're, they're welcome of course to attend. Please keep them uh, by you and please avoid uh, the room for the ladies because there's some other event with sign up. So if you have your, uh, your young kids or youth, please have them in this sitting inshallah. Okay, today inshallah we'll start a new series in the halaqa. Uh, this series called Guiding Stars. Role models, men and women around the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So today, inshallah, is the start of the series. We're going to start with introduction, and after the introduction, we're going to go into uh, the, our first star in the series, inshallah. Don't come again, Ab. Uh. <laughs> يا يا عفوا او تعمل تست مع مع ضياء اوكي جزاكم الله خير وي جيف يو ا تريت ان شاء الله اوكي سو فور ذا سيريز ان شاء الله تو بي سكسسفول اي وود لايك يو اول تو بارتيسيبيت رايت اند تو ميك ات ايزي تو ريمبر بارتيسيبيت مين سويت سو اي بروميست اند اي هاف سويت So when I ask questions and you answer, you're going to get sweets. Inshallah, everyone will get sweets. Okay? Whoop. Okay. Okay, bismillah. Okay. Questions. Any slide that has this mark, get ready. There are going to be some questions there. Okay? And then we need you to answer these questions. Now, to make it easy, I'll, I'll try to align the series with the Sira series that brother Fauzi, mashallah, jazakallah khair, is doing a good job with it. So some or most of the questions you're going to have there, or some of them would have been, came through Sira, or would be coming through Sira. So that would be easy. So brother Fauzi, don't answer the questions until everyone is stuck. No candy for you, okay? And then again, keep kids with you. Okay, introduction about the series. Again, the series, the first intro introduction here is to understand all of us to align who are the companions and what, what are their rights on, it, on us. Okay. There is hadith that's reported by Sahih Muslim, in Sahih Muslim, in which, I'll just read the, the meaning of it. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the resemblance of myself, sorry, the, the, uh, the skies in the heaven are protection for the skies. And when the time of Allah, or when the time comes, or the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, that the skies are gone, the sky would receive whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dictated for it, which is basically the end of life. Similarly, I, Prophet talked about himself, he is a protection for his companions. And when, by the death, or when Prophet Muhammad is gone, meaning he's, he's dead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the, the, the companions will come. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dictated for the companions will, 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 will come to them. Similarly, the companions are protection for the next generation, tabi'een. And when they are gone, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dictated for this ummah will come. So, that's a stress on the importance of the sahaba or the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ What happened to them? Those or as for the foremost of the first of the immigrants and the helpers and those who follow them in goodness. What will happen to them? رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we'll go back here again. Sorry. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking here about سابقون الأولون, the early believers من المهاجرين والأنصار who are they? the companions of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لقد رضي الله عن المؤمنين إذ يبايعونك تحت الشجرة فعلم ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وأتابهم فتحا قريبا indeed Allah was pleased with the believers when they pledge allegiance to you O Prophet under the tree that will come later in the seerah inshallah he knew 
what was in their hearts. So he sent down uh, serenity upon them and rewarded them with a victory at hand. Laqad radiyallahu. Upon whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with whom? Companions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an example for the believers. Muhammadun Rasulullah. والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة محمد is the messenger of Allah and those with him are firm with the disbelievers and compassionate with one another you see them bowing and prostrating in prayer seeking Allah's bounty and pleasure the sign of brightness can be seen in their faces from the trace of prostrating in prayer. This is their description in the Torah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave or foretold Prophet Musa alayhi salam in the Torah about the, their characteristics. Then, وَمَثَلُهُمْ فِي الْإِنْجِيلِ Their resemblance in the Injil. كَزَرْعٍ أَخْرَجَ شَطْأَهُ فَآزَرَهُ فَاسْتَغْلَظَ فَاسْتَوَى عَلَى سُوقِهِ يُعْجِبُ الزُّرَّعَ لِيَغِيظَ بِهِمُ الْكُفَّارِ And their parable in the gospel, Al-Injil, is that of a seed with sprouts its tiny branches, making it strong that it becomes thick, standing firmly on, that, on its stem to the delight of the planters. In this way, Allah makes disbelievers or the believers a source of dismay for the disbelievers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the companions in very, very, very great ways. Also, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, was narrated in hadith uh, narrated by Al-Bukhari in hadith that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it clearly لا تسب أصحابي فلو أن أحدكم أنفق مثل أحد, uh, أحد ذهبا ما بلغ مد أحدهم ولا نصفي Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said do not abuse my companions for if any one of you spent gold equal to Uhud imagine how huge the mountain of Uhud is and imagine if we spend the way or the amount or the uh, equal amount or equal weight of gold of Uhud in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not even reach one mud, mud is this amount, two hands, or even one half of one of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another narration, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونُهُمْ, uh, يلونهم. ثم الذين يلونهم ثم يجيء قوم تسبق شهادة أحدهم يمين. The the شاهد from this hadith that Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the best people are those living in my generation, and then those who will follow them and those who will follow them. So the best generation is generation of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم with the companions and then followed by the generation next which is the tabi'een etc. Okay. Question mark. So we're gonna have to think together. Who is a companion? What is the definition of companion? Okay, Tariq. Close friend of whom? Jazakallah khair. Great. Anyone, any other discussion? Any other, uh, any other answer? That's good, but <laughs> any other, any other answer? Anyone? You can have more than one answer. Kids, companion. I'm uh, I think there are two uh, for that. One of them, they, uh, they want to uh, during the uh, period of Rabbi Hassan Salam, even we didn't see him. So that's one definition. The other, if we met him once, so either one would be uh, the definition for companion. Okay, Zakhla Khir. Any, do you like to uh, uh, rocket? Uh, can you give it to me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Huh? Someone who obeys the Prophet. Okay. Close. You like Snickers? Sure. Okay. Okay. The best or the, the definition of a companion, right, that most of the scholars agreed on, is that a Sahabi, man laqiya al Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mu'minan bihi, wa mata ala al Islam, wa lauta khalala dhalika riddatun ala al Asah. Companion, radiallahu an, is anyone who met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam believed met him right face to face believed in him 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and died on the state of Iman. So the last when he died, he was in a state of Islam. Even if, even if he was Muslim, then became murtad and then became Muslim again. But he died on the state of Islam. Okay, another question. Are all companions on the same rank? I need answer. Raise your hand. Uh, okay, no. Okay, no. Why? Some of them, like, uh, uh, were Muslim descendants, Muslim descendants. Uh huh. And of course, it's to me, like, not all of them have the same rank. Okay, good. That was a good answer. <laughs> no, where's the thought? Where's the thought? Someone else didn't answer before. Someone is from Ha, please. Shaker, brother Shaker. <laughs> Are all companions on the same rank? <laughs> yeah, it's like a lock here. There's one answer as well. Okay. So what do you mean on the same rank? They're all the same rank. All of them in the same rank. In Jannah and Fadl and everything. And everything. Are they all the same? No, عدول. أنا بتكلم. Are they all? Are عدل like عدل? Okay. Yes. Is it yes or no? Yes. They're all the same rank. All of them. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. No. What's your proof? <laughs> what's your proof? They're not all the same rank. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وما لكم لا تنفقوا في سبيل الله ولله ميراث السماوات والأرض." لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعظم درجة من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا. The shahid here, those of you who donated and fought before the victory over Mecca are unparalleled. They are far greater in rank than those who donated and fought afterwards. But they're all believers. Brother Mac. But they're all believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Wa kullan wa'adallahu al-husna. Those before and after, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him glad tidings of al-husna. Okay, good. Another question. That's a follow-up on this, on the last one. Just a more explanation. According to majority of scholars, again, there's different, different ways. They rank the prophets, uh, the scholars of Prophet Muhammad sallam in different ways. The first way is based on collective buckets or collective ranking and the top are the earliest in accepting Islam followed by who spent or struggled before the Hudaybiyah treaty compared to those after Muhajireen over Ansar the people who are witnessed or at so not witnessed attended Badr fought in Badr then the people who fought in Uhud then those who pledged the allegiance under the tree Bayat al Rudwan as yeah, it will, it will come later. Okay, some questions here. Who attended the Seerah? How many people fought in Badr? Okay, Brother Hussain. Brother Shaq. 310. No. 313. Who said 313? Okay, Brother Mahdi. Brother Shaq. Brother Shaq, you said 310? Close enough. <laughs> Approximation. Okay, actually, in the books of Sirah, they're actually between 313 and 315. They're 313, 314, and 315. Right? Most common name is 313. Uh, most number. Okay, how many Muslims fought in, uh, in the Battle of Uhud? They didn't come yet. Brother Fauzi will start after, huh? Good. So they were actually that's the right answer. They start with 1,000. <laughs> I'll give you half. <laughs> okay. Brother Fauzi, wait till the end. <laughs> okay. Okay. How many people or how, how many Muslims gave the pledge of allegiance under the tree? Bayat al Rudwan to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Huh? بعت الرضوان في بعت العقبة الأولى عقبة الثانية وبعت الرضوان. This this didn't come yet in the seerah. It will come later. Nineteen. Ninety. It's way off. 
so it didn't come yet. So anyway, it's between 1400 and 1500, okay? That will come later. So that's the ranking, a collective ranking. In a different way, there is individual ranking. And there's, okay, the top are the 10 who will give glad tidings of Jannah, okay? And the top of them is Abu Bakr Siddiq. This is the best human being after prophets. He's number one, followed by Umar and Khattab, then the rest of the 10. Ladies or the household of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his daughters, his wives, and all the household. Then specific companions who gave glad tidings outside the tent. If you can give me some examples of names who gave the glad tidings that were our people of Jannah outside the tent, you can also get Bilal. Bilal. Who said Bilal? No. It was a man who said Bilal. <laughs> okay, another name. He's... <sighs> Fauzi, you're making a trouble. <laughs> huh? Jafar. 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 Who else? Huh? Abdul Masoud. Abdul Masoud. Who else? Anything from the ladies section as well? You can participate. Uba ibn Ka'am. Amen. It's one answer. Zaid ibn Harith. Okay. Okay, let's stop here. So who can who can name all the ten who are giving the, the glad tidings of the Jannah correctly? And you can give them two gifts. The ten no, the ten who are giving the glad tidings. There's one hadith in which we have ten who are giving the glad tidings. We said all the ten correctly. Four. Huh? 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 Abu ibn Jarrah and you count ten? Five khulafa, oh my four, best. You're confusing us, man. Okay, catch. <laughs> Sorry, anyone got hurt? Okay, one more. What are the right? <laughs> what are the rights of the companions on us? the rights of the companions on us as Muslims. They have rights. Respect them. What else? Sorry? To pray for them. Yeah. Tant, do what you would like. <laughs> Anything? Okay, what else? Tariq. Okay, it's close. It's respect still. Huh? Brother Hussein. Follow their good deeds. Sure, they're all hovering around the right answer, but no one said it correctly. Huh? Brother Shaker. This guy, this guy here. Yeah. Sorry? Follow them. Yeah, sure. Huh? Love them. Okay. <laughs> okay, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ Whoever those who came after them, after the, the, the companions of the Prophet. Yeah, what would you like to say? Yeah, Layla, what do you like to say? Love them, sure, take this. Catch. <laughs> okay, those, those who came after, the companions, basically from the time of Tabi'een until now, until the end of day, until of the day of judgment, those يقولون, they say what? رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلَّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ Which basically that we have to pray for mercy, praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy as 
Pontus said, okay? And those who came after them will pray, O Lord, forgive us and our followers, believers, our follow, uh, fellow believers who preceded us in faith. Okay? So we have to pray to them. And also, and if we cannot have a grunge or, or hate toward them, right? So we are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have pure and clear heart toward them, right? And that's why some of the scholars said that if you see a man who dislikes the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, know that this person is not a good person. Brother Sheikh. He's the, the best human being after the prophets. After all the prophets. Yeah. Brother Shaker, Jazakallah khair. Yes. What do you do when uh, someone disrespects or says something bad about the Sahaba? Yes, you have to explain to them uh, gently and kindly and then let them know their, their, uh, their rank in the sadhq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And give him, share with them the, the Quran, ayat from the Quran and from the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallam that show their rank and show how should we treat them. Right? It's very clear, it's with Quran, just with gentle reminder, reminder. Some people don't know or some people maybe hear some uh, bad things from the social media or TV stations and they don't follow the full story, inshallah. Thank you for participating. <laughs> okay. Good. So we should now all know who are the companions, right? At, at least. This is the introduction part. Why is this series? So this series, inshallah, it's about the companions and why? Basically, because we are commanded to love them, as the ayah said, uh, and pray for their mercy. So we should know them more to be able to love them more and then pray for them. Similar to what Brother Fauzi do in the seerah, we have to know the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because we are commanded to love him. We need to know him more. The same thing for the companions. Also, they are the inheritors of the Prophet's knowledge, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are the inheritors. They are the teachers and the carriers of the deen. Uh, Quran and the Sunnah. Without the companions, we would not have Quran came to us. Without the companions, we never had any of the Prophet وسلم, Sunnah or Ahadith. So they have huge rank because of that. And also we have to command it to follow them and, and take them as role models. These are the role, real role models in our mentors in our life. Okay. In this era, I will be taking different resources. The top two are Seer Alam and Nubala and Usd al Ghaba fi Ma'arifat al Sahaba. But also use many others. These are some part of them, not, not, the whole, uh, not the whole thing. And then you can see this sometimes in, uh, in references. Not in this one, but inshallah we have that. Okay, now let's start. Again, reminder again participate means treats and candy. There's more questions coming. Okay. Okay, the first guiding star. This is the first guiding star in the series. Again, it's going to be, try to make it easy for two things. It's again to get it close to the seerah that the bro uh, Brother Fauzi mentioned. So they have some of, the some of the answers in your head and stick with it. And then uh, also to, for the short of time because this today is the introduction. So we have uh, less time, inshallah. Okay, the first guiding star, his nickname is Abu Abdullah. Whoever can say who is he, I will give him three candies without saying any more hints. No. 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 <laughs> but you can't take candy because you didn't, you didn't take. What, what's your answer? No. But you can take this one. Huh? Sorry? Okay, still let him take this. <laughs> no, it's going to be hard, but let me give you the second hint. That, that's going to be easy. Just hold, hold your horses. Okay? The second hint is, it's the first ambassador in Islam. Yes. <laughs> it's not counted. <laughs> next, next time I'll take your candy from you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, it's he's the first ambassador. He's Musab ibn Umayyah. Again, that's also mentioned 
in uh, the Sira, especially in the uh, Battle of uh, Badr, that we spent like what, four or five weeks with it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Here's the introduction. Before, so quick thing, to understand the Sira, you have to also to understand how did the Arabs lived before Islam and the time of the Prophet It's a completely different life. There was no nations, there was no countries, there were different things. And the Arab Peninsula were all based on tribes, right? And that's this here is the map of the tribes of the Arabia at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what really interests us, if you zoom in here, on the west coast, you can see that the name was what? Kinana. So that's all this land was controlled by Kinana. Okay? Or the tribe of Kinana. Okay? Who is Kinana? Again, this part here is what encompassed uh, Mecca and Medina. Who is Kinana first? Anyone knows who is Kinana? Huh? A uh, person. a person, of course. <laughs> yeah. So Kinana is actually one of the grand grand grandfathers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There is a hadith, authentic hadith, in which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that his lineage, the complete complete uh, uh, connection or or family tree from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam up to Adnan is authentic. And there's no doubt about it. But between Adnan and Ismail, it's not clear. And actually, he mentioned it's not super authentic. However, this here, all these names are authentic. Now, Kinana, you can see that, okay, if you count, Abdullah is the father of Prophet Muhammad Sallam. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, it's the 13th grandfather of Prophet Muhammad Sallam. Now, how is this important? Because the Arabs used to have they're, again, they're tribes. They have tribes. And the way the tribes is you have, okay, for example, Kinan. All the offspring of Kinan, they are the tribe of Kinan. But under Kinan, you can have also different tribes. You can have, okay, the tribe of Fih, which is Quraysh. You hear all about Quraysh. Quraysh was the, the people who lived in Mecca. So actually, when you refer to Quraysh, this means that they are offspring of Fih. So everyone that is offspring of Fih is part of Quraysh, okay? We also heard about Abd Manaf. Abd Manaf is the third grandfather of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you say Banu Abd Manaf, means the offspring of Abd Manaf. Now, the Arabs uh, respected and dealt with family ties very, very, very highly, right? And the closer you are in blood, it makes you, you give you better rights on each other. However, for example, Quraysh, all Quraysh, all Mecca was Quraysh. To the outside of Quraysh, they are one, one voice. However, within them, you have some rivalry. Sometimes you have rivalry, sometimes you have friction, sometimes you even have war. So, it's very important to understand that because later on, when you have, when you go more in the Sira, you're going to have some people that are very close to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his immediate tribe, which is Banu Hashim, his immediate grandfather, or some people from Banu Abd Manaf versus different uh, tribe and others. And then the goal here is that eventually, inshallah, you're going to see in the series, but also through the, through the Sira, that the people who accepted Islam are not all from one tribe. There are different demographics different backgrounds, different uh, skin colors, different uh, uh, original skins or mother tongues, right? Some of them are uh, free, some of them were uh, slaves, and some of them were f slaves that got freed, right? So it's important to see that. Now, today's star, go back, I don't want to go too much on this, but go back to today's star. Mus'ab ibn Umayr, he's Mus'ab ibn Umayr ibn Hashim. Ibn uh, Abd Manaf, Ibn Abd Dar. Now look here, he is not Ab this Abd Manaf is not this Abd Manaf. This Abd Manaf is actually the nephew of this Abd Manaf. Okay, so so actually, if you look here, he is related to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam through Qusay, right? So who is now? If you have someone, two sons of the same father, they are brothers. 
if they are connected through the grandfather, they are cousins, first cousins. The second is going to be second cousins, third cousins. So he's actually the third cousin of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he came from the, the, the tribe of Ab, Ab, Abd al-Dar. Okay? Okay, why is this important? We're going to see this in a second. Now, Mus'ab al who was born in Mecca. He was about 16 years younger than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? And he is, we said, he's from the tribe of Banu Abd al-Dar, which is a tribe of Quraysh, one of the tribes of Quraysh. And they were, they were very, very rivals to Banu Abd al which is the tribe of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Banu Abd al-Dar hold in their hand the keys of Kaaba and the Quraysh war flag, which means that Quraysh could not declare war with any tribe without Banu Abd al-Dar to give the okay and hold the, the flag to start fighting. So they were very powerful. And as I mentioned, they were very rivals with the Banu uh, uh, Abd al-Manaf. They were cousins, but at the same time they were rivals. They were rivals in the, in the sense of honor, which... Huh? Yeah, so basically what happened, I don't want to go into that history that much. What happened is that all this offspring from Prophet Ismail alayhi salam, they are the offspring of Ismail. They are the in, in, initial inheritor, uh, uh, inhibitors of Mecca. They controlled Mecca for too long until there was some time when they went down and then actually the tribe of Khuza'a went and controlled Mecca. They lasted under Khuza'a control until Qusay ibn Kilab, who is the, the fourth grandfather of Prophet Sallam, came in power and actually he, he was able to took back the ruling of Mecca back to Quraysh. Okay? When Qusay died, he had many kids. He, when he was now took over, re, or re took all the power back to him, he controlled everything. He controlled the war, he controlled Siqayat uh, al-Hajjij, basically uh, we're giving water to the Hajjij, uh, giving food to Hajjij, Dar al-Nadwa, basically it's the, 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 the decision making, all that stuff. When he died, he had many, many sons, his oldest son was actually uh, Abd al-Dar. So he took most of the stuff, he took everything from his father, he everything. Then later on, the other tribes went and fought back after these two died. And then we said, okay, let's settle down and then split the things among us. So Banu Abd al-Dar kept the keys of the Kaaba and take, kept the liwa of the, uh, of the war. And then Banu Abd al-Manaf took with them a siqaya uh, and the take care of the hajij, etc. Right? So this why they would have been rivals in that sense. Who has more honor? Right? For them, honor was, was a great, great, great thing. They doesn't have, doesn't matter that, okay, of course they have money, they have power, that's good. But for them, when you have an honor, actually honor was highly reputed even over money sometimes. Brother Hassan. What's the value of having the key of the Kaaba? Great honor, the greatest honor ever. What's the value of the keys of the around the first tribe? So, right. What was inside the Kaaba? Why do you have to lock it? And sure, sure. It, what is inside itself? Well, there was some gold, uh, deers and gazelles, but this is not the most important thing. The Quraysh had, Quraysh was the most elite, right, tribes in the Arabs because of Al-Haram, because of the Kaaba. They are the neighbors of the Kaaba. Because they control this land, all the other tribes respected them, followed them, and then looked them highly. So among them, because the Kaaba is the Bayt of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then all of them honored the Kaaba, because all, most of them, they, at certain point, they were all believers after Pr Prophet Ibrahim salam, until their deen got corrupted. So whoever holds that great honor is, is a huge thing, right? So again, for them, it was the honor, not, they're, no, they're not looking for, for the valuables inside, they're just looking for the honor, right? Okay, his mother was very loving, however, it was very, very tough, very strict lady. His parents were very rich. Prophet Umar was, was, at a certain point, was the most handsome, fashionable, pampered youth in Mecca. 
He used to wear the best clothes in whole Mecca. He used to wear the best colognes and perfumes, right? He had, was very rich. It was sometimes described that when he walks in, a, in an area or a street, if someone, if you walk after him from the smell, you can tell, okay, Mus'ab passed in that, that path. Now imagine from the amount of, of very, very uh, pure and rich perfumes or colognes that he used to wear. So it was very, very pampered youth, right? The most, what do you call it now, and social media? For uh, the most famous person or youth ever in Mecca. Huh? Have the most followers, <laughs> right? So that was, that was before his, his Islam, and he was like very, very rich, very spoiled, not in, the, in a bad way, but, but spoiled from money wise. Now, he accepted Islam at early stage, at early stage and early age. He was still a young man, and he accepted Islam at the time that the Muslims accept Islam were in the Dar al Arqam ibn Abi al Arqam radiallahu anhu. Okay? Exactly what is his order of accepting Islam is not mentioned. The only thing that is in Imam al Dhahabi mentioned in one narration, he was among the, 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 the first 50 or the first 70, right? But for sure, he was among the earliest people. Now, of course, imagine his tribe, very rich, very powerful, his mother, very strict, right? So when he became Muslim, he did what? Did he go in public and, and say that Muslim? No, at that time, all the Muslims was being tortured and then have faced very, very uh, harsh uh, treatment as Brother Fawzi mentioned. So he kept it secret, fearful of his tribe and mom. That stayed for a while until one day, his nephew, Uthman ibn Talha, radiallahu anh, spotted him praying with the early Muslims. So he saw that, he immediately went to his mom, gave her the news, it was known, and then everything changed 180 degrees. From the t this time, from the most pampered person, actually, she took him, she chained him, or they chained him, they jailed him and kept him in content for a long time. There was some torture here and there, and actually they took all the money from him. So it was a financial embargo. Go check. Jazakallah khair. Actually, yes, that's correct. He was and he remained after. Yes, and till now, his offsprings have the hold the, the keys to the cap. That's right. No, 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 it was still, still, it was the, the, the Muslims, okay. Quraysh knew that Prophet Hassan has da'wah, but it wasn't that, in that public yet, right? And the Muslims, most of them were hiding. Nobody, like some of them were like the elites or Abu Bakr Sadiq, people would know that they are followers of Prophet Hassan. But most of the others kept it uh, hidden, right? And kept it in secret. Okay? It was fearing for their tribes, for their masters of their slaves, etc., right? Sorry? It was not. It was not for sure said. Uh, probably he went after. We'll talk about the when he went to Banu, Banu Abdul Muttalib, the closest. Probably it could have after that. But again, it was that still in the early stages of that. Hold off. There were some questions coming in a second. Just hold off. Just hold your horses. Sure. Questions. Sorry, have you said? Yes, of course. The top, the early 50 and 70 or 70 Muslims. Oh, his mom, at that point, at that point, no. It was only, only one. Yeah. What was his age at when he was So 16 years younger than Prophet Sallam. The da'wah started when Prophet Sallam was 40, right? So that he was what, 20, uh, 26. And then let's say, between, you will know that this is before the fifth, hijra, uh, the fifth year of da'wah for sure. So between that, it was like between 26 to 27, 28, something like that. So he died at the age of 40 in Ghazwat uh, Uhud? Yes. So he should have been in the early 20s, uh, when he accepted 24. Yeah, it's about 24, uh, between 24 to 26, right? Because again, all this happened before Hijrat al-Habash al and they will come to that in a second, right? Okay, good, okay. 
Sorry, questions? Not yet, hold that, hold this thought, okay? So, as I mentioned now, he was very, very rich, very spoiled before Islam, after he knew, they tortured him, they jailed him, chained him, and left him in there for a while. His mom tried every single harsh way to return him back, but he did not accept. After she got tired, she kicked him out with nothing. She took everything from him, and then she kicked him out. Yes? So he went to, yeah, he went to Dar al-Arqam ibn al-Arqam, listened to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listened to the message. A lot of people at that time, they didn't like what Quraysh is doing. They didn't like the, they're worshipping idols, they're doing wrong things. So a, lot, a number of, of early Muslims, actually their hearts were yearning to some change. When they found it and they heard something, they accepted on the spot. So let's try to change the pace quickly before Isha, inshallah. It's, there is narration here, it's narrated in uh, uh, Tirmidhi, it's a hadith, it's da'if hadith, kind of. Walakin is talking about that one day, again remember, he was most pampered person before being Muslim. One day, he went into the masjid when Prophet Muhammad was there with other companions. He saw uh, Mus'af al Umayr came out to have only one burda, very, very cheap kind of cloth with actually uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, some animal furs in it. When Prophet Sallallahu saw him, he remembered what, how, what, how did he used to be before being Muslim. And then Prophet Sallallahu cried out of that and he mentioned to the, his companions at that time, remember this time they were you being tortured at the early stage. But the shahid here, or the, the, what I want to say is that how his life changed after Islam, 180 degrees. Now, okay, the, the torture of Quraysh, continued, right, to Musab al Umayr and the other companions for too long. And then one of the first things that they, or actions they've taken, uh, as brother uh, Fauzi mentioned in the Sira, was the first migration to Abyssinia. So Musab al Umayr was one of those people who migrated to Abyssinia in the first migration. Okay? Okay, now, question. Whoever attended the Sira, when was the first migration to Habsha? Brother Fauzi, please, just wait. <laughs> MashaAllah, you have good uh, in this. Yes, it was, it was in, it was in, <laughs> it was in Rajab in the fifth year of Da'wah, not, not, not of my, uh, migration, first year of Da'wah, okay? Okay, how many people went? How many people migrated? Huh? 15. Hold on. Huh? Who else? 15, 16? Close but not correct. Huh? The first migration, not the second. Huh? 11 men and 4 women. So total close to these guys. No, it's not 20, it's 15, man. It's not about 20, how? <laughs> okay, so they went in Rajab in the fifth year. When did they come back? First migration, not the second. Yeah. Huh? After Surah Najm. Okay, correct. When? No, actually, it's less than a year. They went back in Shawwal in the same year. And actually, that's after Surah Al-Najm. What happened after Surah Al-Najm? Please don't answer this. What happened? What, why specifically when Surah Al-Najm was revealed, what made them to come back? Prostrated. Yeah, exactly. So there was a rumor when some people saw Quraysh prostrating after Prophet Hassan prostrated when from Surah Al-Najm was revealed. They said, okay, Quraysh accepted Islam. Let's go back. Oh, sorry, of course, by the, now there was no Twitter, there's no Facebook at that time, so somebody has to travel. By the time people traveled there, oh, Quraysh accepted Islam, so they went back. It's good news. On their way back, they didn't get the news until they arrived. Okay. However, according to the books of, of uh, uh, history, he did not migrate again. He stayed in Mecca, even for the second migration. During that time, he shadowed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu very closely. And he was like a very, very close 
like, like again, like a shadow, learning from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Quran, Sunnah, and everything. And that was actually a preparation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for what comes. So he showed great dedication to learning and excellent or excelled in knowledge. Learn Quran. There is hadith, it's hadith mawquf, it's da'if, but it's hadith mawquf. And then I don't want to go back to the hadith, there is no time. It's hadith mawquf on Ali ibn Abi Talib, which means that most probably it's the saying of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And he said that every prophet was given seven, seven uh, talented or clear mind followers or students. However, Prophet Muhammad was given 14, not seven. One of these 14 was Mus'ab ibn Umayr along with Ali ibn Abi Talib and Al-Hasan al-Husayn, Ja'far, Hamza, Abu uh, Bakr, Umar, Bilal, Salman, Ammar, Al-Maqdad, Hudayfa, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So he was most of the, one of the elite companions at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now, let's pace forward. Now, remember, from the time he came back from Habasha until what comes now, he was very like, sticking to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu learning. Quran, Sunnah, everything. Until the time that came the first Aqaba pledge of allegiance. When was that? Question. Sira followers. Huh? No. Huh? What? Two years before Hijrah. Which year was that? It's close, but. Eight or nine. haram alayk. Like two years before Hijrah, night is day. Exchange later. Huh? Tenth? Mm, not it's close, but not not correct. Anyone, brother Fauzi? The 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 No, twelfth year. Twelfth year, yes. Yeah, 13 minus 1. It's one year before, and then they came back in the next year, and then migration happened. Okay? Okay, how many people were in the first Aqaba? Huh? Sorry, Abdul Qadir said something? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Seven? Seven? Any other number? Nine? Twelve. Twelve. Correct, twelve. It's easy to remember. Twelve here and twelve people. 12, take this. Oh. <laughs> okay. So this bay'ah, all right, this bay'ah, we have 10 minutes. They, this bay'ah actually was called in the history also bay'ah what? Bay'ah al-Nisa, because of, there was no tree, tree, uh, terms of protection of Prophet Muhammad hmm? There's no jihad. There's no jihad, exactly, exactly. Okay. Then after this bay'ah, they asked Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to send with them. Now the 12 people from Medina, they accepted Islam, they're coming back to Medina or Yathrib at that time. They asked Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to send with them someone to teach them Quran, Sunnah and Salah. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent with them Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu. Okay? And he was hosted by As As'ad ibn Zurara radiallahu anhu. He's one of the uh, Aws, right? Men a... Uh, he hosted him and they started reaching out to the people of Medina, right? And teaching them Quran and Sunnah. It's hadith and narrated in Al-Bukhari that the first, the first person migrated to Medina was Mus'ab ibn Umayr, then Abdullah ibn, ibn Ibn Maktoum, then, oh, and then they were reading Quran for others, then followed by Bilal, Sa'ad, Ammar ibn Yasir. After that, Umar ibn Khattab came with along with 20 other joining them. So the first one who migrated to Medina is Ammar ibn Yasir. And he was the one who's teaching the Al-Ansar uh, Al about Quran and Islam. Mus'ab ibn Umayr. Mus'ab ibn Umayr. Now, Tatum Quran and, and Islam. And he, his nickname became Muqra al-Medina because he was the one reciting Quran and teaching others Quran. So he became Muqra al-Medina. Now, at the beginning, it was Sayyidina Mus'ab ibn Umayr and As'ad ibn Zurara. Please, they can they used to approach people individually, one or two is here and there, right? And everything was okay. However, it happened that the master or the head of Al Madina at that time, which is Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, he was not Muslim at that time. He heard all this bustle and hustle that happened in Medina, he didn't like it. 
And actually also he didn't like it because the one hosting Musa ibn Umair was As'ad ibn Zrara, his nephew. So, and he loved him very much. He didn't want him to, to interrupt it or annoy him. So he talked to Usaid ibn al-Khudayr radiallahu anh. He was another chief or like second rank chief and asked him, okay, go to Mas'ud ibn Umayr and kick him out. And even if As'ad ibn, As'ad ibn Zura doesn't like it, kick him out as well. So he went to them with his spear and he was like very angry. When he saw him, As'ad ibn Zura told Mas'ud ibn Umayr, listen, this is one of the chiefs of Medina. If he accepted Islam, be ready that a lot of other people will accept Islam. So be, give him the right treatment. So here is now a very important thing. Musa ibn Umayr, when he saw him coming with the spear, told him, listen, just he was very cool, very calm, right? As Brother Rida told us how to deal, deal with non-Muslims. He talked to him very calmly and then tell him, listen, brother, listen to me. I'm going to tell you some words. If you like them, take them from me. If you don't like them, I'm going to take myself and then go out and you'll never see me again. Is that a good deal? He said, that's fair. So he listened to him. And they gave him the teachings of Islam. Immediately said that the face of Asa, of, uh, of Lusad ibn Khudar changed and became very happy and very bright. And on the spot, he accepted Islam. Now he went back to Sa'ad ibn Mu'az radiallahu an. He saw him coming. He said, this guy is coming to you with a different face from this, the face he went. He knew it in his face. They came in and as, uh, uh, Sayyidina uh, Sa'ad ibn Khudayr tricked As'ad uh, 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 Sa ibn Mu'adh such that he go and listen from Musa ibn Mu'adh himself. So he pushed him in some, some way. Sayyidina uh, uh, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh went, was angry again with his spear. The same thing. Went to him, he told him the same thing. Listen to me. If you don't like what you, what you hear, I'm going to take myself and leave. He said, this is fair. Listen to him and accepted Islam on the spot. Now, and this is a game changer. Because of that incident, uh, Sa'ad Sa ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anh, went back to his tribe and he was the chief. He told him, how am I to you? He said that you are our chief, you are our ma master, whatever you do, we follow you. So okay, all of you, all of you, the whole tribe, I'm not going to talk to you, I'm going to not deal with you, I'm not going to uh, have any action or any dealing with you until you follow that deed. To say that in that night or in that the same day, the whole tribe of Banu, Banu uh, Abd al Ashhal, right, it's a subset of Al Aws, became Muslims in the spot. At that point now, Musa ibn Umayr, instead of just approaching ones and twos, because he didn't have any protection in Medina, now he has the protection of the big guy, right? So he had protection. Now he starts increasing the rate of da'wah of Islam. What helped him more is that later on, as the hadith mentioned, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum joined him to Medina. And he was also a good memorizer of Quran and then start put together, start spending, spreading the Quran. Things went quickly. I'm sorry, I need to finish here. Islam is spread in Medina. Then Musa ibn Umayr, who was the first one to lead prayers, who was the first one to lead Jum'ah ah in Medina uh, and prayers. And of course, teaching all, all of them. Then. After one year in Medina, he went back to Mecca, the Prophet Wasallam, spent some time with him. He witnessed the, uh, the, the bay'ah, the second bay'ah, and then after that, he migrated back to Medina. Then after that, Prophet Wasallam later on migrated. Now, second Aqaba pledge of allegiance, when was it? The first one was 12, the second one was? Okay, it's either 12 or 13. I need just one answer, huh? 13. Who said 13? 12? 12? No, 13. <laughs> Abdul Qadr's. One for you, one for you. Okay. Okay. Time, time, time. 13. Oh, 13. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, how many people were there? Can you please keep it quiet? We need to finish in, in five minutes. How many people were there? Huh? Second one. 70? 73 plus two women. <laughs> oh, who said 70 in the back? <laughs> okay. Now, okay, keep it quiet, quiet, guys. We need to finish, okay? Okay. Then, from the seerah, we know that Prophet Muhammad appointed Musa ibn Umayr as the flag bearer of the Muslim 
army in the battle of Badr, which is the first big battle the Prophet ﷺ attended. Now, one question. This is super dangerous. Why? It was super, super dangerous. Why is that? Brother Sheikh. No, no, no. Is it dangerous? Why is it dangerous? Why is this bearing, bearing the... Yes. In, in the Arabs... Huh? Sure, sure, sure. In the Arabs, in the Arabs way of, of war, or even at that time, the flag bearer, everyone was actually going to attack because he was in the heart of the army. So all the army actually was, he's the, 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 the target that everyone goes to attack. Which means that he is the target, that everyone goes after him. Right, they're attacking, they find they're attacking their way to him. So if they reach him, basically he is the target for everyone. Right, which is a very dangerous one. And then as, bro as brother, uh, uh, Fauzi mentioned in the Sira, they were very, the number of Muslims very small compared to the, uh, those in, in the, in, uh, in the other side. And of course, we know the story of, of his brother being captive. We're not going to repeat that. Okay. Uh, when was the Battle of Badr? Quick. Second, second. Okay, we have second here. Okay, 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 okay. Oh. Oh, what do you do? Don't touch the take cable. Okay. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, this one. Sit down. Okay. Sure. Then after that, okay, we're almost done. Sure. Almost done there. Okay, please. Okay, keep it quiet and one answer only, okay? Sure, sure. Let's just let's finish first. He was also appointed as the flag bearer in the second battle, which is the Battle of Uhud. What year was it? Not not Brother Fauzi? Did, huh? Fifth year, I'm fifth year. Third year, yes. Okay, then in this battle, now, hear, hear this, guys. Okay. okay, hear this. In this battle, actually, Musab Ramayr was killed. He was, again, as mentioned, he was the target for everyone. We know what happened, or at least we will know what happened in uh, uh, Battle of Uhud when Brother Fauzi start resumes the Sira next year, next, next week. And then, every, and then the Muslims, some of them retreated. The army was uncovered. They went to him. He was killed by this person, uh, Qathma if, uh, ibn al-Layfi. He, he first cut his right arm and then the right arm, and he tried to protect the, the, the flag, and then he killed him. It's narrated, it's actually very, very interesting, very uh, sad, and but also we're happy for them because he has the highest rank in, in paradise. Because when he was killed, Prophet Muhammad Sallam on this hadith that mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, that they couldn't find anything to cover him except with one garment that when they cover his head, his leg is covered and vice versa. So imagine, this was the most pampered person before Islam. I'll skip this. This ayah, you found this ayah in, in the books of uh, Sirah, that they say that it was narrated, or uh, Prophet Muhammad narrated it on Prophet, uh, on uh, Bus'ab ibn Umayr. It's not exactly the, in the seer, in the most, uh, the muttafaq hadith, that this was actually revealed in all, in, in most of the murtide of the Battle of Uhud, including Prophet Musa uh, 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 So it's not specifically on him, and Prophet did not recite it on his head, but it was, uh, uh, Adas ibn Malik said, we understood that this is revealed on the, in, in those people. Okay, wrapping up here. Okay, very quick exercise, and inshallah we close. Remember the list that we had at the beginning? Let's take them one by one. With Musa ibn Umayr, one of the earliest people to accept Islam. Group, yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay. Did he spent and struggled uh, before the Hudaybiyah Treaty? Yes or no? Yes, of course. Was he Muhajir or Ansari? Muhajir, so it was a higher rank. Did he attend Badr? Did he attend Uhud? Did he attend the Pledge of Allegiance under the tree? No, no. He was killed at that time. <laughs> Is he one of the ten that were given the command, the, the glad tidings? No. Is he one of the ladies of the house? No. Is he specific companions who were mentioned of giving the glad tidings of Jannah? Yes. yes. Okay. So from that, you see, he's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of the high top ranks of Muslims. Now, let's work exercise. One minute. I just need group collectively. When you think about the characteristics of Musab ibn Umayr, 
I, I was able to come up with these. Wisdom, intelligence, calmness, selfless, patience, endurance, knowledge, negotiation, teaching and coaching. He, because of him, the whole Medina or most of the Medina became Muslims. Leadership, he was a great leader in war and in teaching and coaching. Determination, he had something, he changed his life and he went in accepting Islam and no, no, nothing returning back, even his mother and his tribe. Sharp shooter, one target going forward. Dedication, bravery and courage. Flag barrier in two battles where Muslims were the weakest, right? Humbleness, zuhd, self-discipline, piety and devotion. If we go from here today, and then we give Musa ibn Umayr a star on one of these, to say that he is our role model in one of these, which one would you go with? We need a group exercise. Brother Haytham? Bravery. Who said bravery? How many say, people say bravery? Okay, what else? <laughs> okay, that's bravery is one. Okay. Huh? Negotiation. What else? Okay, but we need to pick one. What is the thing his most? Whatever you agree on, I'm going to have give him the star. Leadership. Courage. Can we grant something? Huh? Coaching. Okay, brother. Hold, hold on, hold on. A second, a second. We have, it's time for Salah. One second. Okay. Coaching. The, the president say coaching. Everyone agrees? Coaching, okay, coaching, good with it. <laughs> so, we'll give him the star for coaching. And then every time, inshallah, when we have one of the Sahaba, we're going to give him a star at specific characteristic, and we'll go build that, inshallah. Uh, I will conclude here. Zalakum Allah khayran. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-Asr. Inna al-insani la fi khusr. Lilla ladina aman wa amilu al-salihati. Wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Zalakum Allah khayran. And see you, inshallah, in the next week with Seerah, inshallah. Zalakum Allah khayran. Oh, okay, can I have some candy? No food in the masjid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. <coughs> Ashhad an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhad an la ilaha illa Allah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله